Hey everyone, have you ever tried to learn how to code but got stuck? In my new Private Fan programming class, we're going to break that loop. This course is primarily focused on people who are complete beginners, so don't worry if you don't have any background. This course is different than other courses because we're going to teach you to think like a programmer and solve problems like a robot. So let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome to this precursor video where we're going to talk about how to install Python and how to get started with Jupyter Notebooks as well as how to use other alternatives like Google Colab. So this course is primarily going to be taught using Jupyter Notebooks. And Jupyter Notebooks is a very easy and free way to get started using Python. Uh, but there's also like other alternatives out there that I'm not going to go over in this course. If you already have some development experience and you want to use those other platforms, there's really no difference between using that and using this. Jupyter is a good way to start because it's an interactive experience where you can uh, interactively write code and see the output directly right when you run uh, a cell of code. So that's why I used it for this course, but you can really feel free to use any development environment. I think Jupyter is, if you have no experience at all, Jupyter is the way to go. So just follow my instructions here and uh, you'll be able to get started. So first we're gonna do is going to install Python. So most machines will have Python, but already on the machine, but usually you want to install a separate version of Python. So the way you would install Python is to go to python.org, go to downloads, and you should see the latest version for your operating system. So I'm working on a Mac right now, so I'll see it here. But if you would need it for another operating system or if they, their auto detection was incorrect for whatever reason, you can find it here. So yeah, I'm going to click here and that will download Python. So when I open it up, we get this window. This package will install Python. Okay, so we're going to continue or read through any of this information if you'd like. And then we're going to see install on Macintosh HD, install, and ask for Okay, and now installation was completed successfully. So you just installed Python 3, 3.12.1 is the latest version as of this video uh, creation. But generally different versions of Python, as long as three point something will work pretty well. There might be some new features that exist, but you can follow the steps here no matter what. So now that you've installed Python, you can hit close. Uh, it will say it wants to move the install to the trash. That's fine, move to trash. And then you're going to open a terminal. Terminals are, so here I've opened iterm2, which is one terminal that it is very common and allows some custom con configurations. It looks slightly different. It has some fancy color and text, but ultimately it doesn't matter which terminal you use. If you're on a Mac, there's always the terminal that comes with your, with your Mac that's automatically installed. You can also use iTerm, which is the one that I'm using here to the left. Uh, it has a couple of additional features from the standard Mac terminal. And if you're using a Windows, you can also search for, using, for the command prompt, and you also get a similar terminal output. So you'll see here that there's a white box. That's where your input will go. So if I type, it's going to go into here. And here you can directly execute commands that are using the internal programming language of the computer and the operating system. Usually this is something like bash or shell commands. That's what this refers to. And now this course isn't going to be teaching you shell commands, but we do need one shell command to get started. And you might need some in other, in other later parts of the course in order to install package directories. But what we're going to do using the commands is to install new packages for Python. And the way we do that is very simple, something called pip. So pip is an installation package for Python, a Python package manager that is installed with every version of Python. So we have pip and then we can pip install Jupyter. Now I already have Jupyter installed, but when you run this command, you'll then be able to install Jupyter into your, onto your workstation or onto your computer. And once you're here, you can type Jupyter notebook and it will open a Jupyter notebook for you. Now this is gonna look very familiar to you. This is your directory structure here. So you can go into documents, for example, and it will ask if it can use the documents. it will have all of the information that you want here. But to create a new Jupyter notebook, which is what we're going to be doing in this class, you just hit new, and then you go to Python 3, PyKernel, and then you'll have a new Jupyter notebook. And you can name that Jupyter notebook, whatever you like, my first notebook. 
And now you can start with the course. So the course, you can just skip ahead to the next video if you'd like, because the course is going to start here. You have everything you need once you see this. If you run into any other issues, it could be very dependent on your personal computer. So whether you already have Python installed or whether you installed it in the right place. So unfortunately, I can't go through all of those possible scenarios, but this general flow should be a pretty easy way to get you up and started, which was install Python, run pip install Jupyter, and then run Jupyter Notebook in the terminal. And then you can get started. Just a note that when you've done this, the, the terminal it will have all of this output and it's going to be running. If your terminal gets closed for whatever reason, Jupyter will no longer be no longer work. Although your notebook will save periodically, you can save yourself or you can turn on autosave if you'd like. But these are all functions of Jupyter Notebook. I just wanted to mention that to you. So if I if you want to close out this in the terminal, you can use depends on the operating system, but you can use control C and we'll ask, do you want to shut down this server? The box around the N means that it will automatically do no. If you just hit nothing. So I'm going to hit yes, type Y. Um, looks because it said no answer and type yes and it closed. So now the Jupyter notebook is closed. And if you see this, the connection to the Jupyter server notebook server could not be established that's because you just shut down the server if you want to restart the server you just do the same thing you just write jupyter notebook and there you go you're back where you started um yeah so that's all you need to know to get started with jupyter another options that's out there that's come out more recently is google colab i'm just going to search for google colab on google search and you can click here at research.google.com Welcome to Collaboratory. You'll notice that this looks very similar to the Jupyter Notebooks that we were just looking at. There's some similarities. There's a couple of differences, but the main, the core functionality is the same. So Collab is basically hosted on the cloud. So it's easy to just run up in any browser. Some of the commands are slightly different in Collab. So I just wanted to mention that because if you're following along with the tutorials, there might be some differences there. And either way, will work fine. You'll have access to Colab even with a free account. So it doesn't cost you anything to use Colab. And it's nice in that it saves it into your Google Drive. So you can don't have to worry about too much about where you're going to save your files. And so you can see here, this says an introductory Colab, but if you want to create your own Colab, you go to file, new notebook, it says that I must sign in. So I'm going to sign into my account. Now I signed into my Google account, it allowed me to create my own Python notebook. And I can name this whatever I like, my first notebook. I can name it up here. And now you have some similar stuff to what you would see in a Jupyter notebook. Uh, yeah, so that's it. That's all I have for this video. Thanks for following along and excited to jump into the first videos coming up soon. Thanks.